Right now, the state Supreme Court hears a case that could drastically affect how much power the GOP-controlled legislature has, what the two sides are saying. Plus, some new polling out from Marquette Law School, just how tight the races for Wisconsin's Senate seat and the White House are this morning. And we are tracking rain that is starting to spread into uh, southwestern Wisconsin. We'll see how long this wet weather will last. Come on. Hey, good morning, everyone. Thanks for waking up with us here on a Thursday. I'm Shane Hogan. And I'm Chris Stanford. And we got some rain moving in, some more rain, and some cooler temperatures. Kelly Slifka has been tracking it as it gets closer and closer to Dane County. Hey there. Yeah, good morning. It is uh, moving into a southwestern Wisconsin. Uh, you can see it's still a little ways off from Madison, but it's uh, plugging along at a pretty good clip and actually seeing some moderate rain coming in out of northeastern Iowa. That be maybe reaching the Prairie du Chien area. Parts of Crawford County, maybe even to Vernon County. We'll have to see how that plays out. But we are expecting this rain to continue to spread our way. This is the three-hour future radar. You can see as we get toward 8 o'clock here in Madison, we will see some of this lighter rain, occasionally some moderate rain moving through as well. And once the rain moves in, it looks like it's going to be pretty steady for uh, most of the morning hours. So you can see this area of rain continuing to spread out of Iowa and uh, rather cool rain at that and that'll be with us throughout the morning hours keeping our temperatures only in the 40s for most of the morning more rain today it should become more scattered as the afternoon wears on clearing out tonight but it's going to be rather cool going into the upcoming week weekend even though it should be quiet more rain chances it looks like going into a uh, next week starting out at 46 in Fitchburg also Madison Deerfield at 46 Sun Prairie currently 46 as well kind of a uh, a red sky in the morning uh, this morning and that's out ahead of this rain that'll be spreading on in and bring that rain uh, for us throughout the morning hours temperatures only in the 40s this morning we'll talk more about the weekend forecast is rather cool and also some rain chances next week as well coming up all right kelly thank you back to our breaking news this morning fire crews are leaving the scene of a nursing home in black earth they were called the heartland country nursing around 2 30 this morning for an odor investigation Administration at the home says an overnight staffer smelled something suspicious and called 911. Nothing was found by fire crews. There are no injuries. Everyone is safe. Uh, we'll continue calling for updates. If there's anything else to report, we'll bring it to you right here on News 3 Now this morning. 602 now. We now know the identity of a man killed in a shooting last Wednesday on Madison's north side. 31-year-old Andre Rice died after a woman he had a relationship with shot him. This was outside an apartment building on Northport Drive on the city's north side. The woman, Tamar Brianna Beasley, turned herself in just hours later. Beasley said the man allegedly punched her before the shooting. She is still in jail. We also know the name of the victim in the Beloit homicide from earlier this month. The Rock County Medical Examiner's Office says the 20-year-old Jaden Benitez died after the April 5th shooting on Nelson Avenue. Benitez was from Janesville. Police originally identified him as being from Beloit. Last week, a 16-year-old was arrested in connection to the shooting. A case the state Supreme Court is hearing could shape how much power the state legislature has. It's centered around a stewardship program and whether the legislature's budget writing committee needs to sign off on purchases. The governor has argued that the Republican-controlled committee has been acting like a fourth branch of government by blocking some of these administrative proposals. The legislative committee may not veto the executive's decisions in implementing a statutory program, including by spending appropriated money. Now, again, I will say the respondents, I've not seen a single case anywhere in the country that blesses this kind of <clears throat> Politicians have been using it as a proxy fight over how much power the Republican-controlled legislature should have compared to the Democratic governor. The legislature argues the committee and their actions are part of their oversight purview. To national politics now, the U.S. Senate's involvement in the impeachment over Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas is over not long after it began. That's after the Democratic-controlled body of the U.S. Senate voted to kill both articles of impeachment against the secretary. House Republicans voted to impeach Mayorkas earlier this year over his handling of the southern border. Lawmakers voted 51 to 49 in the Senate along party lines. He became the first cabinet secretary to be impeached in nearly 150 years. House Minority Leader, Democratic uh, uh, Congressman Hakeem Jeffries, called Mayorkas impeachment a political stunt. A new Marquette Law School poll is giving us an idea on where the hotly contested race for U.S. Senator right here from Wisconsin currently is at. As you see, Democratic incumbent Tammy Baldwin has a five-point edge over her challenger Republican businessman Eric Hovde. 
Now that's among registered voters. Among likely voters, they're deadlocked at 50% each. The average margin of error on these uh, polls is 4.9%, meaning the race could really go either way. Marquette Law School also has poll results out about the presidential race, and there's been a little movement since the last poll. 51% of registered voters favor former President Donald Trump, while 49% back President Joe Biden. Last month, they were tied at 49%. The numbers are identical among likely voters. When you add in the independent candidates, Robert F. Kennedy Jr., Cornell West, and Green Party candidate Dr. Jill Stein, the uh, Trump still holds an edge over Biden, but only by one point. 605, meanwhile, the criminal trial against former President Donald Trump will resume today. It comes after a day off. Jury selection will continue in today's proceedings. So far, seven jurors have been seated. The case still needs five more jurors and six alternates before testimony can begin. Wisconsin U.S. Rep Mike Gallagher is set to resign this Friday, according to his office. He made the announcement back in March. That leaves Republicans with an even uh, more narrow four-seat majority in the state house, but there are now four major bills heading to the House floor this Saturday. Those include bills that would fund allied militaries in Israel and Ukraine. However, Gallagher's office is now saying that he would have, quote, the flexibility to stay and support the aid package Saturday. That means Republicans may have another vote to cast during these tense negotiations. Teens and young adults looking to get into the trades have a way in thanks to a new federal program. It's put on by the U.S. Labor Department. The program offers free training that provides students with the skills needed to get high-quality jobs in the trades. The program is open to anyone in Wisconsin ages 16 to 24. Under-resourced um, people that, you know, that they, they didn't have um, access to the same opportunities that others did. That here is an opportunity for them at no cost to learn a trade and learn all of the life skills, all of the things that they need in order to be successful out there. Students live on site and can learn, earn their GED while being trained for a specific trade. Afterwards, they get set up with jobs from companies that partner up with Jobs Corp. The House could vote on a set of bills to provide foreign aid and potentially ban TikTok as soon as Saturday. Some Republicans, some hardline Republicans in the chamber oppose the measure. But now two powerful and unexpected allies both want the package to become law. That increases its chances, as Amy Kiley reports. It requires a couple of Democrats. House Speaker Mike Johnson is likely to get the Democratic votes he needs for his new aid package. President Joe Biden is now throwing his support behind the set of bills. They provide a total of about $95 billion for Ukraine, Israel, and the Indo-Pacific, according to the House Appropriations Committee. Johnson says he wants to pass a potential ban on TikTok at the same time. That would keep the platform out of U.S. app stores unless it cut its ties with its Chinese parent company. In order to get something into this underlying package, we have to have the votes on the floor to pass a rule. I don't have all my Republicans who agree on that rule. Some of those Republicans who disagree want to remove Johnson from his leadership role. It is growing. Uh, I think some people are becoming more angry than I am. I don't know how long people are going to tolerate this because he's doing nothing but serving the Democrats. An empty speakership is what effectively paralyzed the chamber for weeks after former Representative Kevin McCarthy lost the gavel last year. The question this time is whether Democrats would save Johnson to avoid that chaos. We got to forget about Democrat, Republican. This is serious. This is life and death. This is the future of democracy. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. All right, the uh, clouds are starting to uh, spread into the uh, Madison area, and the rain will be with us here shortly as well. We'll time it all out for you coming up in the uh, first morning forecast. Also ahead in your morning sports, can the Brewers avoid a sweep against the Padres? We'll let you know. You're watching News 3 Now this morning, brought to you by Toyota. Dear Unbreakable Spirit, when the terrain is gnarly, you steady us. When obstacles are ahead, you lift us. When the turf is hostile, you inspire us. Own a legend, Toyota Trucks. Get a new 2024 Tundra Hybrid Capstone for 3.99% APR for 60 months, plus $2,500 cash back. Find yours at toyota.com.
Toyota. Let's go places. This famous wood fence from the show Home Improvement had to have boards replaced 13 times in only nine years. Our fences outlast wood three to one and are all backed by our extensive lifetime warranty. This month, save $1,000 on your project. Visit the website or call the number for your new fence today. I want you. I want fresh air. Hun. You need the experts. The Home Renewal Experts at Beltco will make your project a breeze with free installation on windows, siding, doors, and roofing. Plus, no interest for six years. Free installation won't last long. Hurry. Call now. Call 866 for Beltco. Dad, are you certain this is going to work? Nothing to it. Are you for imprint certain? Certainty matters. Like the certainty of 4imprint, your home for high-quality promotional gear, including exclusive items and brands they love, printed perfectly and guaranteed to arrive on time. To wow your clients, nail your next event, or inspire your team, check out 4imprint.com. 4imprint, for certain. This is Kathy. She's about to see her dentist. She's afraid. Not because of the drill, but because of the bill. A big bill. But Kathy doesn't need to be afraid, and neither do you. Thanks to affordable dental insurance from Physicians Mutual Insurance Company. It's easy to get this coverage. Don't believe me? Call or go online for all the details. You could even have this free information kit. This isn't a discount plan or preventive-only coverage. This is real dental insurance. It helps pay for over 400 procedures. That's a lot. I'm talking cleanings, fillings, crowns, bridges, root canals, even dentures. Bottom line? You'll have help paying for routine care and expensive major work. But if you want deductibles, forget it. There aren't any. No annual maximum either. Plus, you can see any dentist you want. Stop fearing the big bill. Start saving at the dentist. Call now or go to sendinfokit.com. Physicians Mutual, Physicians Mutual. Discover the joy of giving back with Habitat for Humanity and Habitat Restore of Dane County. I love the cause. I love the people. I love helping the customer with their home projects. It's a lot of fun. I've made lasting friendships, and you get a sense of accomplishment. Help build a brighter future. Volunteer today. You're watching News 3 Now this morning. Moving forward. Social Security, it's a big campaign issue and one Americans struggle to understand. A recent survey quizzed 55 to 65 year olds, so those at or near retirement age, about Social Security. And about 40% of them failed. Only 22% got a C or better. To help us out, Dr. Karen Holden, Professor Emerita at UW-Madison's uh, School of, uh, followed School of uh, public Affairs and Consumer Science, and an expert on Social Security and Retirement is here to clear up some of the misinformation this morning. Thanks for joining us. The first question I want to ask is, is Social Security going broke or running out of money? You hear a lot of this these days. Is this true or false? It is largely false. What they are talking about is the trust fund, which is really just a cushion that has been built up over the years when benefits were less than, than the income coming in. That will run out of money in 2035, but payroll taxes and income taxes will still fund about 80% of benefits if nothing changes. Second question for you, the retirement age is 65, true or false? That is false because they have raised in 1983, the, when a similar crisis happened, they raised the, gradually the retirement age, which is now uh, age 67 for certain cohorts. Right, and that's for full benefits. For full benefits. You can start drawing benefits at 62. Yes, and you get a 30% reduction, which is gradual over time. And then after 67, you can build up your benefits until 70 if you keep working. Yeah, this is one of those questions uh, on that survey that we referenced at the start of this segment. One that about half of those 55 to 65 got wrong of when the retirement age actually is. Final question, workers that are currently 50 or under won't get any Social Security benefits. That is very false, because if things keep on going as they are, they will get 80, projected 80% 80 of their benefits. And that is if everything stays as projected, immigration, retirement age, productivity, because this is part of a larger economy. And if things change over the next 75 years, uh, they will 
maybe get even more than they expect. Okay. Well, Dr. Holden, uh, thanks for helping us out this morning and clearing up some of the misinformation out there. Well, thank you very much. I hope that this helps people plan their retirement and save. Social Security is not supposed to be the only source of their retirement right. income. Yeah. Never was intended to be. All right. Well, thanks for your expertise. Thank you. Right, good morning, meteorologist Kelly Slifka out on the uh, patio. It is a little bit cooler this morning than yesterday, and we are seeing these clouds move in. Unfortunately, just as the uh, sun is coming up and rain is knocking on our door, we've been seeing some of this rain spread out of northeastern Iowa, uh, moving through Crawford County, Vernon County, now moving through Richland County, and actually some moderate rain that uh, pushed out of northeastern Iowa, headed into Crawford County, uh, basically just northwest of Boscobel. So we're going to track this. A pretty solid area of rain. This uh, is timing out isn't great because it's hitting us right during, right when the sun's coming up uh, this morning and will be with us, especially this morning. Pretty steady rains. Should become more scattered as the afternoon wears on. Generally a light rain. All this starts to move on out as we get towards sunset and we'll actually see some sun before the sun goes down, which now is almost quarter to eight o'clock when that uh, sun does set. But we are expecting kind of a rainy Thursday hitting us right during the daylight hours and rather cool. Generally most of the day is going to be in the 40s. I think we'll probably pop in the low 50s just as the uh, sun is going down uh, later on today. But we'll be in the 50s into the weekend as well. Next week we are looking at more rain chances even though it will be dry this weekend. See the uh, pink sky this morning. So the uh, clouds moving on in 53 expected today. And once again, I think most of the daylight hours will be in the 40s. Uh, probably pop in the low 50s once that rain is done with. Toward the sunset, 58 is the average. Sun will be up here at 610 or is officially up. All right, we are looking at the uh, clouds to uh, continue to thicken up as the rain spreads across southwestern Wisconsin. Generally light rain, but I would expect that in Madison about 8 o'clock or so. You see some of these yellows would indicate some moderate rain. Don't really expect any lightning out of this, but just kind of a soggy morning. Should start to become more scattered as we get into the afternoon hours. And noticing temperatures generally in the 40s as the rain's going on. But as that rain moves on out toward the rush hour, we'll probably pop in the low 50s as we break out into a little bit of sunshine. But either way, it's going to be a rather chilly day. As far as rainfall amounts, generally a tenth to a quarter of an inch, I would expect. Madison areas to the south may be picking up a quarter, a third of an inch. Some isolated totals getting closer to a half of an inch. So it's going to be rather cool going into the weekend. But looking out ahead into the last few days of April, going Going into May, above average temperatures across much of the country. 46 in Madison, 46 right now in the Dells, 45 in Janesville, 44 in Watertown. A cooler start to the morning. It's 41 in Sauk City, Cross Plains, down to 39 this morning. First warm forecast keeps it uh, wet today, but we get back into sunshine tomorrow. Kind of chilly though. Temperatures in the 50s, maybe down to freezing come Friday or come Saturday and also Sunday morning. Temperatures only getting up close to 50 on Saturday, mid 50s with sun on Sunday. More chances of rain next week as temperatures warm back to close to average near 60. You couldn't have scripted it any better for Layla Edwards. In her first Women's World Championship, she not only helped the U.S. earn silver, but she made the most of her opportunities. The Badger forward only took 10 shots on goal, but lit the lamp six times, which earned her tournament MVP honors. Now, was she a little nervous on the big stage? Of course, but she showed herself and the rest of the world she can play with anyone. I kind of rise to the occasion. You know, it was my first time there, but it uh, was no reason to be shy, no reason to hold back. I think um, just taking advantage of all my opportunities and learning that you know, I can be the best version and best player I can be. Um, I knew she had that in her. She's obviously a fantastic player. She's so amazing to watch and a great person in general. But um, I knew she was going to step it up. Um, she has that in her. She has that it factor. Um, and it was amazing to see it come out at that level. Wisconsin softball taking on Minnesota in a twin bill. Scoreless in the third, but not for long. Hillary Blomberg bounces one to the wall and left to bring home two, giving the Badgers a 2-0 lead in the third. And that was more than enough run support for Tessa Mignanamo. She was absolutely dealing. Seven innings, six strikeouts. And her first career no-hitter, Badgers blanked the Gophers 3-0 the final. Wisconsin would lose game two. Brewers looking to snap a three-game losing streak and avoid being swept by the Padres. The crew didn't have a hit until the seventh. Eighth inning, they're threatening. Blake Perkins smacks one into left, and Bryce Terang 
Going to slide on in for what would be the game-winning run. Brewers win 1-0 the final. And that's it for Morning Sports. Have a great day. All right, Zach, thank you very much. Well, hey, get your saddles and cowboy boots ready because the 43rd annual Midwest Horse Fair returns to the Lion Energy Center this weekend. It's three days full of clinics, entertainment, shopping, and, of course, plenty of horses. Tickets are on sale online and at select retailers. They can also be bought right at the gate, but with cash only. You can also find more information at MidwestHorseFair.com. And, of course, we are giving away some free tickets. Today is the last day to enter your chance for free tickets from us here at News 3. The package we're offering is almost valued at 600 bucks. To enter the giveaway for the 2024 Midwest Horse Fair, just log on to channel3000.com slash contests. While still ahead, we are recapping this year's Day of the Badger. Also still ahead in our next half hour, the challenges in finding affordable housing in Wisconsin, they are leaving some folks in undesirable living condition. We continue to follow a big story here. That's still ahead. And as we had a break this morning, we're taking a look at gas prices. We're back right after this. Eric Franke, News 3 Now at 5, 6, and 10, moving forward. My name is Jack Frank. I'm a retired paper mill worker in the valley here, and I work for Copas and Bus part-time on the side. I've had my own route now here for the last three, four years, and the kids on it are great. Flexible hours, they work with you in many different ways. If you've got something going, they, they, they accommodate you, or they try to get somebody to run your road. Copas and treats you decent, you know, all the years I worked here. It's a great place to work. This day and age, we spend way too much time scrolling. Instead, join us for some horseplay at the Midwest Horse Fair. Check out insane tricks, hundreds of horses, clinicians, amazing eats, and spectacular shopping. And entertainment like you've never seen, IRL. Sorry, ask your kids what IRL is. It's the great Midwest. Join us at the Alliant Energy Center in Madison, April 19th through the 21st. My husband and I finally agreed that we need a new bathtub and shower, so he went right to work on it. I think he's procrastinating. For a new bathtub or shower, just call 1-800-HANSONS. Installed in as little as one day with optional safety features and a no-leak guarantee. Get 50% off installation or no interest, no payments for two full years. Offer ends soon. Call 1-800-HANSONS. Get it done. The Honda you want is here. Get a great offer on the stylish HRV or the Civic. Which car and driver called fun to drive? There's never been a better time to drive in the moment with Honda. Buy online, reserve from select dealers, or hurry into your local Honda dealer today. Let's hit the road. The road to winning at Wild Rose Casino and Hotel Clinton, Iowa. You're just a short drive away from a weekend full of fun, food, and winning. Plenty of slots calling your name, table games too. Or watch and wager on the games in our DraftKings Sportsbook. There's something for everyone at Wild Rose Casino and Hotel Clinton. You'd rather be here. Kelly needs new floors, so she went to the flooring experts at LL Flooring, and it was as easy as one, two, three, floor. Step one, find the material that works for you. Had to be houndproof. Step two, browse your style and your budget. Blondewood, naturally. Step three, pick the right floor at the right price. Step four, I mean floor, enjoy. LL Flooring, every step covered. Right now, save up to $500 on installation. Schedule your free estimate today. Oh, we're back sharing Linda's morning with everyone. A lovely shot over Lake Koshkanong. That is beautiful. Wow, that water looks, I'm sure it's freezing still, but that's gorgeous with that nice orange pink tone in the sky very yeah, pretty yeah we got the trees popping leaves are really starting to come yeah, out i bet in in two weeks linda if you go back to that same spot hopefully that tree will have 
Some nice lush leaves on there. Certainly. Hey, great shot. Thanks again for sending it to us. Shane, what are we talking about today? Okay, we've been talking about Dave the Badger on the show this week. Well, yeah. we have got some numbers to report to you this morning because it was another massive success All for right. the university. So here we go. UW-Madison raised over $1.78 million Whoa. this year. That is a record for one year of the event. Over 4,700 different donors contributed 7,200 gifts. That, of course, means Bucky was doing plenty of push-ups. 721 push-ups? <laughs> That's incredible. Now, it brings the event's five-year fundraising haul to over 8.5 million bucks. That's impressive. That's impressive. Right. No wonder Bucky's tuckered out. I would be, too. Goodness, that is quite a workout that the poor... Bucky had to do there. <laughs> now, we, you know, we were talking on the show uh, Wednesday or Tuesday this week um, with the folks from the university mm -hmm. talking about, you know, how important this event is to them and, um, you know, where all this money can go to so many different programs. Yeah, what was it, like 150 different uh, spots on campus right. that you could choose to, to send your donation to. And they were really hoping for not necessarily to, to break the dollar figure record, right. uh, but to get more people involved, to get more people donating, to get more gifts, and it looks like they accomplished that. So congratulations yeah. and uh, big kudos to everyone who contributed yeah, this year. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Let's check in with Kelly Slifkin now. He's got to look at your bus stop forecast. Hey, Kelly. Yeah, they did get the uh, chairs out on the uh, terrace now. Unfortunately, not a great They're day out. to be out on the terrace. It's going to be kind of wet today with temperatures in the uh, 50s, low 50s at that. Clearing for the weekend, we'll have more coming up right after this. News 3 Now, first warm weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. This homestyle chicken salad wrap from Subway, this is how you do it. Savory chicken, crisp veggies, all wrapped up. These wraps are amazing. People can hear my thoughts. That's a problem. Stay fresh out there with all new wraps from Subway. We really need new siding. After I get my windows. Have you tried opening ours? We're not touching the windows until we redo the roof. It's leaking. We are not redoing the roof without getting new gutters. The gutters can wait till I get my bathtub. We agreed on a shower for mom. But I thought... Uh -huh. Happy spouse, happy house. Exactly. Wait. For home improvement guaranteed to make everyone happy, everyone can agree on 1-800-HANSEN's. Because our durable, energy-efficient, and weather-resistant windows, roofing, siding, and gutters are all guaranteed for life. And our baths have a no-leak guarantee. With thousands of five-star reviews, we're your trusted home improvement expert, exceeding expectations for 35 years. Get 50% off professional installation, or no interest and no payments for two full years. Offer ends soon. It's under. Over. Hey, happy spouse, happy house. Call 1-800-HANSONS, get it done. There's a reason big dental bills often come as a shock. Because sometimes you don't realize what's not covered until you get the bill. That's why affordable dental insurance from Physicians Mutual is important. It can give you benefits that go beyond what you get from more limited coverage plans. Because no one likes a big dental bill, especially if you're retired or on a fixed income. For a free information kit, call or go online now. This isn't some discount plan or preventive only coverage. This is real dental insurance that helps cover over 350 procedures like cleanings, fillings, crowns, bridges, root canals, even dentures at any dentist you want. Dental insurance from Physicians Mutual Insurance Company helps cover preventive care, basic work, and major procedures with no deductibles and no annual maximum. For your free information kit with all the details, call now or visit sendinfokit.com. Physicians Mutual, Physicians Mutual. Chevy Equinox has been ranked number one by J.D. Power for dependability and new vehicle quality among compact SUVs. In other words, it's really good right from the start. Chevy Equinox. Do that again. Connected by OnStar. Qualified lessees can get this Equinox for $269 a month. See your Badgerland Chevy dealer today. We wanted to be able to enjoy all four seasons. 
and patio enclosures helped us make that dream come true. The one and only patio enclosures. Right now, unlivable conditions in a Beloit apartment complex. What management said when we took residents' claims directly to them. Plus, breaking news of an update on an odor investigation at a local nursing home. And after a quiet night, we do have rain spreading into uh, southwestern Wisconsin, moving fairly quickly. We'll time this out for you coming up. Hey, uh, good Thursday morning, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to News 3 Now this morning. I'm Chris Stanford. And I'm Shane Hogan. Thanks for waking up with us. We had some rain uh, earlier in the week. We've got a little bit more on the way coming today. Yeah, and some cooler temperatures. Cool and rainy. Uh, it's on the way. It's uh, just about here, Kelly Slifka. When do you think it'll arrive in Madison? Yeah, I think uh, about 8 o'clock here in Madison. You can see it's getting closer to us, at least uh, to, on the north side, northwest side, up there towards Sauk County. Have had some moderate rain coming in out of northeast Iowa into Crawford County. That's weakened a little bit, but you can see now the leading edge of that getting closer to the Dells here, uh, also into Sauk County. Uh, so spreading on in from the west. It's going to be with us. This is our three-hour future radar. You can see that that rain does spread in here in the Madison. About 8 o'clock, it's going to be fairly light, but once it moves on in, it's going to be fairly steady. Nothing real heavy expected, but we will see some steady light rain, occasionally some moderate rain. You can see some moderate rain showers over parts of Iowa. Really no lightning with this, just uh, some cool rains expected for uh, this Thursday, and that'll be with us uh, going in throughout the morning hours, especially. We'll become a little bit more scattered this afternoon, and it's going to be re relatively cool going into the uh, next several days. We will see sun tomorrow right through the weekend, but it's going to be well below average. Looks like more rain chances coming our way next week. Right now it's 46 in Middleton, 46 in Madison, Fitchburg right now dry with clouds, but the clouds are thickening up right now on the horizon. Northwest winds are a lot lighter than they were yesterday. A rainy Thursday, but it does clear up as we go into the weekend. We'll take a look coming up. Okay, sounds good. Thank you, Kelly. Uh, we want to follow up on some breaking news this morning as fire crews have now cleared the scene of a nursing home in Black Earth. Crews responded to Heartland Country Village early this morning for an odor investigation. Administration at the home says an overnight staffer smelled something suspicious, called 911 at about 2.30. Firefighters didn't find anything, so no injuries. Everyone is safe at the home. Happening today, closing arguments in the case of a woman on trial for murder. 24-year-old Jakira Anderson is charged with killing Kasu Samba back in March of 2023. Samba was a car salesman in Middleton and a member of Madison's Gambian community. The killing reportedly stemmed from a dispute between Anderson and Samba over a car that she bought at MSI Auto Sales. Anderson says the features on her new car weren't working, so she returned to the dealership. Court documents say she wanted to get her money back or exchange the car. After about an hour of dealing with her, one of Samba's co-workers asked her to leave the building. Surveillance video shows Samba trying to get Anderson out of the door, gesturing her to leave. That's when she shot him. Why did you pull the trigger? I, I didn't mean to. I, didn't, I don't remember me. I don't remember. Actually, like, needed to pull the trigger. I, I feel like it's... Happened like, like a reflex. Anderson's lawyers say the shooting was an act of self-defense. When asked what she was planning to do when she pulled the gun out, Anderson reportedly told police she just wanted to scare Samba. The jury will be back in court at 8.30 this morning. Madison police are looking for a man accused of sexually assaulting a woman jogging on the Capitol City Trail. Police believe it happened Tuesday evening around 5.30 near Ulbrick Park. The victim told police that she was running and a man slapped her from behind. The woman was able to make it to safety and report the assault to police. Officers are asking anyone with information, though, to give them a call. You can remain anonymous by calling Madison Area Crime Stoppers at 608-266-6014. Or you can log on and submit a tip through p3tips.com. As rent prices continue to rise and salaries stand still, finding affordable housing here in Wisconsin is becoming less and less attainable. News 3 Now's Maddie Heim digs deeper into this issue and takes us inside one apartment complex where these struggles are on display every day. Over the past several weeks, I've spoken with dozens of tenants at one affordable housing complex who claim they've been forced to endure unlivable conditions and even left with nowhere to stay while their building underwent construction. 
In March, I took these concerns to upper management. You know, a lot of these were was news to us. That's Michael Snowden. He's the senior vice president of Community Preservation Partners, an affordable housing rehabilitation company. In 2023, CPP signed a contract with Beloit's Woodside Terrace, a community for low-income elderly and disabled residents, and initiated what they said would be a cost and hassle-free construction process. The reality? I was going to really go to a shelter because I know I can get food, bath, and and bed. When I spoke with Snowden in March, he promised to address the concerns with tenants. So when another tenant reached out to me, I visited her hotel room. I'm hurt deep down inside because I didn't have any help. Sade Barn claims her hotel stay was not paid for by Woodside Terrace, but by Child Protective Services. I think I want to do this. Just play with my blocks. Who she already receives assistance from to care for her four-year-old niece, Casey. I was told that we was going to have places to go and they was going to give us vouchers, but I did not get anything. I didn't get a voucher. Barnes says when she would attempt to call management for help. And it wrong, it wrong, it wrong, no answers. And she isn't the only one leaving voicemails. Tenants I spoke to weeks ago expressed the same concerns. She was saying how she's sleeping in her car, and I was like, that is ridiculous. Like, you should call somebody or do something. Like, but who do we call? Nobody answers. I just, just hope and pray that we can get some answers and we can get some help. So I got Snowden back on the phone myself, pushing for an update. After I saw your story, I actually um, went out to Beloit. I want to see what the residents see every day. Snowden told me he was disappointed with what he saw during his visit. We need to remember that these are people's homes. Those people's homes are hard to find in a market where supply for low-income housing does not meet demand. A report done by the National Low-Income Housing Coalition in March of 2024 found that Wisconsin is facing a shortage of available and affordable rental properties. The state would need more than 100,000 low-income properties in order for supply to meet demand. The report also found that 72% of low-income renters in Wisconsin suffer a severe cost burden, meaning they spend more than half of their income on housing costs, severely limiting budgets for food, transportation, and child care. Of Woodside Terrace's 120 units, 116 are home to low-income elderly or disabled tenants, several of which told me the complex was one of their only choices when applying for affordable housing in Beloit making the lengthy displacements even more frustrating. So I asked Snowden if he and his team implemented any new practices after his visit to Beloit. We've instituted some policies in regard to nightly photographs from our general contractor to our construction management team and myself. Uh, just to see the condition of the units. He claims CPP has scheduled continuous visits to the property. I've got one of my team members going down in two weeks. Uh, to follow up on my visit. And as for the rest of tenant concerns. I just don't want to be living like I'm a homeless person just because they finna upgrade my apartment. I gave them so many chances to even make it right. Snowden claims he and his teams are now taking individual calls daily to straighten out the mess that was left for these tenants and provide reliable, affordable, and livable housing. Reporting in Beloit, I'm Maddie Heimsch, News 3 Now. Meanwhile, in Madison, a downtown church will be demolished and replaced with affordable housing. A $50 million mixed-use project will replace St. John's Lutheran on East Washington. The project will have 130 apartments. 110 of those will be for people earning between 30 to 60 percent of the area's median income. The city is contributing to cover some of the cost, and clergy are also raising another $3 million. We're tearing down our current sanctuary, but we're really becoming a sanctuary for all people. We're doing this housing so that people from all walks of life, whatever their religious background, can have a safe place where they can come and live and work in the heart of the community that they serve. Demolition of the church will begin this summer. A heads up for Madison drivers. Starting Friday, North Broom Street will be down to just one lane. Here's a look at the impacted area. Construction crews will be paving Broom Street between West Dayton and West Gorham. The city says work starts at 8.30 Friday morning. The street will fully reopen at 3 in the afternoon. During those hours, West Dayton will be closed at North Broom, except for emergency vehicles. West Gorham and West Johnson will not be affected. 
More local news, the Madison Museum of Contemporary Art has a new director. Paul Baker Prindle will take over. He received his graduate degree from UW-Madison and his bachelor from Edgewood. Right now, Baker Prindle is working as the director of the Contemporary Art Museum at California State University. He'll start his new job here on May 9th. The iconic sunburst chairs lining Memorial Union Terrace are back. It's the unofficial mark of that the school year is nearing an end for UW students. 2,000 chairs are now out on the terrace. UW says each chair lasts about 10 years when their time is up. Workers remove the chair legs and use the backs to make some art. You can check out some of those art pieces at Memorial Union and Union South. Can't wait to get back on the terrace. Well, we're going to have to wait a little bit because we do have some <laughs> rain on the way today. Some uh, showers spreading already into uh, southwestern Wisconsin. This will be with us throughout the morning into the afternoon. We'll see when it will come to an end. Coming up in the first morning forecast. Also ahead, how a national television show is affecting business for local restaurants. We can all help fight climate change and battle rising food costs. With garden mats, we can all eliminate trips to the store and grow our own organic vegetables right in our backyard. Go to gardenmats.com. Make entertaining and enjoying your home extraordinary with the luxurious look of Pella. At Pella, we see windows differently with the highest energy efficient products and range of options that add long lasting value to your home. From sleek design, custom colors, and long lasting durability, getting the style and functionality you want has never been easier. Right now, get 0% interest for up to 36 months or no down payment, no interest, and no payments for up to 18 months. Visit PellaWI.com today. Are you suffering with neck pain, back pain, or sciatica due to disc-related conditions? You may have tried drugs, spinal injections, or physical therapy just to find out it didn't help. You're not alone. The problem is that some of those treatments focus on symptom relief, but may not address the underlying disc problem. As a result of injury or overuse, the discs may bulge, herniate, or degenerate over time. Our therapies are highly successful and reduce pain associated with those conditions and may help you avoid neck or back surgery. At Midwest Spine and Nerve Center, we'll design a treatment program using the latest in pain relieving therapies, including non-surgical spine decompression, Pro Adjuster 360 computerized technology, laser therapy, and more. Visit our website or call to schedule a complimentary consultation. Check this out, the newest fantasy game from DraftKings. Just pick between two and six players and choose if they're gonna have more or less of a stat. They compete against others for cash prizes. It's that simple. Okay, let's try it. Do you want more Kevin Hart or less Kevin Hart now? No, nope. don't answer that. Download the Pick 6 app today and score up to $200 back in Pick 6 credits if you don't win your first pick set. The crown is yours. What? We can all help fight climate change and battle rising food costs. With garden mats, we can all eliminate trips to the store and grow our own organic vegetables right in our backyard. Go to gardenmats.com. We are following those stories very closely with team coverage. When breaking news happens. We continue to follow a tense situation in Janesville. Trust News 3 Now to alert you. Lock your doors, stay inside. The Dane County Sheriff's Office looking for a pair of people, a man and woman who they say are armed. To keep you informed. The scene is still very active here on Highway 51. And to help you stay safe. Your trusted source for breaking news and continuous coverage. News 3 Now, moving forward. You're watching News 3 Now this morning, moving forward. All right, good morning, meteorologist Kelly Slifka out in the noisy backyard. The birds are up and at them this morning, probably getting ready for the rain that's uh, spreading on in. The clouds have now moved in after being clear all night. And with the clear skies overnight, it set us up for a chilly night. In fact, we're 16 degrees colder this morning in Madison, 22 degrees colder in Janesville. So it is a chilly morning. And now the clouds are on top of us and the clouds will be with us throughout the day and the rain spreading on in as well. Pretty wide 
area of rain moving out of Iowa, southeastern Minnesota, into western Wisconsin now as this uh, cold front is passing through the area. Rain spreading across Vernon, Crawford, Richland, moving into Sauk County now, headed toward the Adele, still just to the northwest of Madison, basically along and north of the Wisconsin River Valley. And this will continue to fill in. Most of it's been light, but we did have some moderate showers move through Crawford County toward a Richland Center. Now, as far as rain, we actually haven't been doing too badly as far as rain this year so far. Of course, we had that drought ongoing from last summer. But we're at a surplus for the month. We've had 3.2 inches, uh, an inch over an inch above our average for this uh, time of the year. Uh, for the year to date, we have had 9.75 inches, and we are just about two and a half inches at a surplus for 2024 so far. We're going to add to those totals today. The best chance of rain will be coming in this morning. It'll be more scattered activity as we go through this afternoon, and it's going to be hitting us right during the daylight hours today. So another kind of cloudy, gloomy day with the rain uh, settling on in this morning. Uh, looking at 50s for the uh, next several days going through the weekend and we'll have more rain chances after a quiet weekend more rain chances headed our way next week maybe we'll eventually we'll be able to get out and enjoy some nice weather like we had last weekend this is governor's island on lake mendota thanks eric for sending in that beautiful photo right now the clouds uh, continue to thicken up expecting a high of 53 the average now is 58 sun doesn't set now until 7:44. so the cold air up to the north is moving southward and in between we have the jet stream just just humming along right across southern Wisconsin. That's what's bringing us the rain today. And we'll be rather cool. We'll, we will clear out to tonight, but the uh, northwest flow will bring in some cooler temperatures tomorrow and also Saturday. A little bit warmer weather expected on Sunday. And along with that, next week, we will have more chance of rain as we start to warm up. So the uh, rain will be spreading in here in Madison, probably 8, 830 here. Uh, pretty steady throughout the morning hours. But as we get toward the noon hour, it will become more scattered. Generally light rain, but we see some moderate rains at times. And a lot of this moving out as we get toward the uh, dinner hour. And probably not clearing out until, unfortunately, right when the sun is about ready to go down. Generally about a quarter to maybe a half of an inch from Madison areas to the south. A little bit lighter amounts areas to the north with this rain. 46 in Madison right now in Janesville at 45, 46 in the Adels. First Warren forecast has the rain today, probably in the 40s most of the day, may get into the low 50s as the rain moves on out later this afternoon into the evening. 52 tomorrow, windy again, a cool Saturday, getting down to 32 in the morning, 49 for the afternoon high, 56 on Sunday. There are those rain chances next week. All right, Kelly, thank you. 646 now ahead of the farmer's market this weekend. We're highlighting a special episode of Top Chef that aired last night. Yeah, the market took center stage as contestants continued to compete for the Top Chef title. Our Braden Ross has more. If we're talking Midwest food scenes, Madison is pretty close to the top of the list. Barbie House is so beautiful. We've been doing farm to table since before it was like the cool thing to do. We just call it eating right. So when Top Chef decided to make Wisconsin its home for the season, a trip to the largest farmer's market in the country was a must. It is unbelievable what we have to offer in terms of fresh ingredients and the way our local chefs and restaurants are taking that inspiration, translating it to the plate. One of those local chefs, Joe Papich, got to host the chefs in his restaurant, Harvey House, and he got to judge them. I try to explain, like, we're constantly constantly judging in the restaurants. We're constantly judging ourselves. But for Papage and thousands of local Wisconsin business owners, the prize is already won. 55% of global travelers say they have visited a place because they saw it featured in a TV show or a documentary. It's reaching people that never maybe would have thought about Wisconsin. They're going to see us differently and they're going to put us on their list of a place they must travel. In fact, some Wisconsin businesses are already experiencing the Top Chef effect. Just since last week when they aired the Frank Lloyd Wright trail episode, Tally Essen has seen a 40% increase in sales. Uh, Pleasant Ridge that had a cheese featured, they were selling one item per minute during the airing of that episode. I asked Papage if he's ready for it. Oh yeah, the busier the better. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cool, That's fascinating. right? I mean, I've been watching it. I'm a couple episodes behind, so I still got to watch uh, this most recent one. But it is really cool that they just immerse themselves right into the community, into these local restaurants, and, of course, showing off the farmer's market is like the creme de la creme of Midwest, it's worth right? showing off. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, what an opportunity for exposure uh, for the country and the whole world. Yeah, uh, absolutely. To see what Madison has to offer. And that immediate impact on sales. I mean, I, that's, that's so cool. cool. That was Braden Ross reporting for us there. As the season continues, there will still be plenty more familiar spots around town that 
have yet to be featured. We'll be looking out for that. And there are some more options now for people looking for a late night bite on State Street. Madison Night Vending Program is back this week with some new changes Wednesdays through Saturdays. Vendors are going to be out selling food near Library Mall. Vendors will be out from 8 at night until 2.30 in the morning. The city's previous late night vending program only ran Thursdays through Saturdays. The number of vendors has also increased from 3 to 5. And here's your final reminder to enter News 3 Now's giveaway for a chance to win four tickets to the Midwest Horse Fair. Today is the last day to enter. The fair starts tomorrow and lasts through the 21st. The package we're offering includes four tickets. It's worth about 600 bucks. The fair takes place at the Alliant Energy Center. To enter the giveaway, just head over to channel3000.com slash contests. Uh, the morning sprint is coming up next. We're back after this. Sponsored by Three Bears Resort, Indoor Water Park and Conference Center in Warrens, Wisconsin. Shop from the largest selection of Chevy trucks and SUVs in Wisconsin at Bergstrom Chevrolet. All with Bergstrom's negotiation-free upfront pricing, including our exclusive seven-day price protection and money-back guarantees. Stop in or shop and purchase at BergstromChevrolet.com. Pick and Save always gives you more ways to save on top of our lower than low prices. And when you download the Pick and Save app, you can enjoy over $500 in savings every week with digital coupons and earn fuel points to save up to a dollar per gallon at the pump. With a Boost membership, you'll save even more with double fuel points and free delivery. Discover more ways to save big every day. Pick and Save, fresh for everyone. My husband and I finally agreed that we need a new bathtub and shower. So he went right to work on handling the project. That's him going online researching bathtub and shower installers. And there he is, calling a few places to get an estimate. I think he's procrastinating. Call 1-800-HANSONS for a new shower or bathtub you'll love. Installed in as little as one day. It's okay. I called 1-800-HANSONS. We custom fit your new bathtub or shower into your existing space for a fast, convenient, and hassle-free installation with any safety features your family needs. Safety bars, seats, and more with a no-leak guarantee. Oh, hey, I'm going to call 1-800-HANSONS. That's great, hon. Get 50% off installation or no interest, no payments for two full years. Offer ends soon. Call 1-800-HANSONS. Get it done. Certain this is going to work? Nothing to it. For imprint certain? Certainty matters. For imprint is your home for promo gear to wow clients and inspire your team. Check out forimprint.com. For imprint for certain. Watch this. It's all 100% real. Witness what happens to this woman's bags under her eyes in an actual time lapse in just minutes. Nothing has been doctored or tampered with. The very real problem will disappear before your eyes and hers with a revolutionary topical formulation that works in just minutes. And the effects will last for hours and hours. Over 1 million people are using this topical technique to visually reduce puffiness and bags. It works on sagging jowls, even fine lines and wrinkles on the face and forehead. Introducing Plexiderm. In just minutes, you can restore and beautify your face, even look years younger. And the look will last all day or all evening. Oh my gosh. <laughs> wow. I'm just in love with the mirror right now. Jump on board and say yes to this amazing $14.95 Prove It Plexiderm trial. You'll see why our customers describe Plexiderm with three words. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Order right now. We'll pay your shipping. Operators are standing by. Get your tickets before they're gone. Visit MidwestHorseFair.com. 6.53, time for the morning sprint. Breaking this morning, we've been following crews leaving a scene of a nursing home in Black Earth. They were called to Heartland Country Nursing Home around 2.30 for an odor investigation. The administration there says an overnight staffer smelled something suspicious and called 911. Crews found nothing there. There were no injuries and everyone is safe at the nursing home. Madison police are looking for a man they say sexually assaulted a jogger Tuesday night. It happened on the city's near east side by Ulbrich Park. Around 5.30 in the evening, the woman was running on the Capital City Trail when a man slapped her from behind. She was able to make it to safety and report the incident to police. If you have any information about the crime, call Madison Area Crime Stoppers.
Today we'll hear closing arguments in the trial of Jakira Anderson. The 24 year old is charged with the killing of Middleton car salesman Kasu Samba in 2023. Anderson went to the dealership that Samba worked at over complaints about a car that she bought there. After an hour, Anderson was asked to leave. Prosecutors say she shot Samba as he tried to get her out of the door. Jurors will return to court this morning at 8.30. We now know the identity of the man killed in a shooting last Wednesday in Madison. 31-year-old Andre Rice died after a woman he had a relationship with shot him. This was outside an apartment building on Northport Drive on the north side. The woman, Tamar Brianna Beasley, turned herself in hours later. Beasley, police say, uh, claimed that the man punched her before that shooting. She is still in jail. We also know the name of the victim in the Beloit homicide earlier this month. The Rock County Medical Examiner's Department says 20-year-old Jaden Benitez died after the April 5th shooting on Nelson Avenue. Benitez was from Janesville, but police had originally identified him from being from Beloit. Last week, a 16-year-old was arrested in connection to the shooting. Congressman Mike Gallagher's last day in office is tomorrow. That leaves the GOP with the House majority of four seats. Meantime, there are four major bills headed to the floor this Saturday. Those bills include funding for Israel, Ukraine, and one that would keep TikTok out of U.S. app stores unless it cuts ties with its Chinese parent company. Gallagher's office, though, says that he'll still be able to support the aid package on Saturday. Donald Trump and his lawyers will be back in court for his criminal trial today. Both sides, lawyers and the judge, will continue the jury selection process this morning. So far, they have chosen seven, but they need five more and six alternates. The judge says opening arguments could begin as soon as next week. Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas will not have an impeachment trial. The Democratic-controlled Senate killed both articles of impeachment. It comes after House Republicans voted to impeach Mayorkas earlier this year uh, amid accusations of him mishandling the southern border. Lawmakers in the Senate voted along party lines. All right, coming up on uh, 7 o'clock, the uh, clouds are with us and the rain will be spreading on in as we look at our future track. 8 o'clock, 8.30, expecting that rain to spread into the uh, Madison area. Once it moves in, it's going to be fairly steady this morning. As we get toward the noon hour, it should become a little bit more scattered. It's generally going to be some light rain, keeping us cool. Most of the daylight hours in the 40s, we may pop into low 50s as that rain starts to wind down. As we get closer toward the dinner hour, so a rainy Thursday for us, temperatures climbing out of the 40s, gradually into the low 50s. At least we don't have the wind today. It's just going to be a wet one. Winds will pick up tomorrow. That'll bring us some cooler weather going into the weekend. Upper 40s and low 50s. All right, Kelly, thank you. Stay with us, folks. We're back in 30 minutes with another news and weather update.